You're not a solo act, you're a sidekick, an afterthought. No one is ever going to take you seriously. Admit, you're nothing without me. I would have been interested to know, okay, Tom King not attached to Batman or DC or some major thing doing an original property. How well does that do? Um, uh, uh, it's difficult to say. I mean, look at... Um, Sean Gordon instance, Murphy. Yeah, look at Sean Gordon Murphy's plot holes. Yeah, what was that three hundred thousand? Uh, that that was it. I mean, and that's Sean Gordon Murphy. That should do a fuck ton more than that. Yeah, and, and he's not a better. He's not better than Sean Gordon Murphy. For no, sure. he not can't hold a candle to Sean Gordon Murphy. <laughs> yeah, Sean Gordon Murphy's not just a good writer, but he's a very good artist, artist as well. Yeah, yeah. So he's got a he's got a two for one there. You know, his artwork sold sold over a million dollars worth last year. You know, this this guy's hot property, but yeah. the uh, the mishandling of his uh, Kickstarter with with plot holes. That should have that should have done huge. That should have done pushing a million more. It's a harsh reality that I think a lot of people need to understand. And I think the mainstream doesn't. Well, I halfway think they don't understand, but I also think they do in some cases because, well, maybe that's why they fight tooth and nail to protect the mainstream, because if they have to go out on their own, have a property that's not attached to a DC or a mega corporation that can subsidize them either in page rate or whatever. If that goes away, what do they have? What? Nothing! Because you have an example like that, which again, that's a successful campaign, but the vast majority of y'all can't do anything close to what Sean Gordon Murphy can do. Not because you, you're not a draw. Mm. The draw maybe is, well, not maybe, the draw is the property. The draw isn't you. There's very, I say this all the time, there's very few people in comics that can call their own shots. Most Mark of them are Mark. Mark Miller. He'll go uh, to say, Mark Millar when he puts his stuff out, which he's just doing for love, by the way. Yeah, because he's already he'll got go, he'll go into, multi millions of dollars. Yeah, he'll go into second prints, third prints half the time because there's an actual demand. There's very few guys. I think J. Scott Campbell, some of the artists that are around, they can call their own shots. Alex mm -hmm. Ross. Alex Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's few and far between, man. A lot of these guys, even if people see you as a decent writer, or artist, when it comes to actually being a draw, you're not that, right? It's like people may like it, people may enjoy it, but then you go off and do your own thing. You're not you're not guaranteed to make a fucking millions of dollars. It's just not how it, how it works. And I think that's a harsh reality that a lot of people should find out. Just because you have a name, or people that, that you were working on a prop of the property, Batman, Superman, Spider Man does not mean that that audience is going to cross over and follow you like you're that good to where or that much in demand that the audience is going to follow you wherever you go. There are very, very, very few people in comics that can do that. Very, very few. Very few people can do that in which the audience is going to follow them wherever the fuck they go. You can name your price. Doesn't matter. Whatever you're attached to, everybody's going to be falling over themselves to get it. But yeah, like. You get these guys, they do a Kickstarter or something like that, and it, and it does, sometimes it doesn't do well at all. Even though they were working, they, they're mainstream, they've done all these things because they're not really the draw. Well, let's start at square one. Marvel and DC have been around for a fucking eternity, okay? Mm -hmm. They have not only been around for an eternity, I think the most important thing is they are attached to, the, and they've been, it's been this way for a while, okay? Warner, they've been attached to Warner for decades, as far as DC is concerned. Um, Marvel. You got the toy biz and stuff, all bailouts, all that. They've been attached to companies that are worth or are spending billions of dollars, okay? That has a way of tricking people into believing that something is thriving when it is not. If you compare it to itself, all unit sales are down, right? Like, tremendously. Like, obviously, comics don't sell anything fucking near what they had been selling over the past decades. People that may be on the outside looking in, the general customer needs to understand that if that shit goes away, if I had to put a number on it and I'm just kind of just flip, like, you know, making making something up. Sure. I would argue that 90% of the guys are, there's not going to be work for. And I think they halfway are aware of that, which is why they, number one, try to keep people that think a little differently out of that market, out of the mainstream, but also why they had been so protective of, even if you saw the numbers, they would always say, well, comics are doing great. It's a lie. It's yeah. not true. But they have to kind of trick themselves into believing it because could you imagine if DC tomorrow, which, look, it's, it's unlikely, same with a Marvel, if they said 
publication, we're shutting the shit down. We're, we're just shutting it down right now. We're, mm-hmm. we're, we're shutting it down. It's not, it's not worth the money that we're sinking into. It. We'll figure it out and reanalyze it later. There's not a whole lot of guys that can go for one, either do their own or good enough to be hired by the independent guys that are doing well. There's just not a lot of money to go around. There's only a couple of entities that can afford to just shit out money and give it to people. And it's it's largely Marvel and DC, and that's about it. Thanks for watching right now. The Ripperverse is in the middle of our latest campaign, Yaira Number 1, which was written by the Saskas. Head over to Ripperverse.com, pre-order and check out our first live action trailer and the latest Ripperverse Studios production. Y'all be easy.